After spending about two months impersonating the real Sin Cara, Sin Cara Negro is unmasked and became known as Hunico. Continuing where we left off on the last belt to bell, let's look at Hunico's first and last matches. Before he was in WWE, Hunico grew up in El Paso, Texas. While in high school, he competed in amateur wrestling, which led Hunico to getting involved with professional wrestling. He began his career in the early 2000s and would compete in both the US and Mexico. After years of dedication and hard work, Hunico was signed by WWE in late 2009 and sent to the company's development system, FCW. He spent the next two years training there until he finally made the jump to the main roster as the Impostor Sin Cara. As mentioned last time, Sin Cara Negro was unmasked in October 2011 after being defeated by the real Sin Cara. In the next week, the Impostor announced that his new name was Hunico and he was going to get his revenge on Sin Cara. Making good on his threats, Hunico interfered and attacked the Faceless One during a match on the following episode of SmackDown. This also created an alliance between Hunico and Sin Cara's opponent, Epico. With a new partner on his side, and his presence known, Hunico is ready to make his in-ring debut. How are we supposed to know that you are Sin Cara Negro? We've never... Okay. Being accompanied by Primo, Hunico teamed up with Epico for his first match under his new persona on the November 11th, 2011 edition of SmackDown. Once their opponents, the Usos, were in the ring, the match started with Epico and Jay as legal men. The Puerto Rican wrestler started on the offensive, but Jay Uso quickly fought back and took over the match. Jimmy soon tagged in and continued attacking Epico. Things were looking good for Hunico's team, but luckily, Epico tagged out and Hunico knocked Jimmy down with a fist to the head. Hunico followed up by beating down the Uso and shoving him into the corner. Epico briefly tagged back in and hit a drop kick before Hunico became the legal participant once again. Despite Hunico and Epico's ruthless offense, Jimmy wasn't going down. The Uso managed to flip Hunico into the air and tagged in his brother. With Jay back in the ring, Hunico began getting hit by move after move. Jay's onslaught ended with a Samoan wrecking ball into the corner, but before the referee could count to three, Epico broke up the pinfall. Thanks to a bit of chaos, which involved both Jimmy and Epico being taken out, Hunico knocked down a distracted Jey Uso with a swing Samoan drop. After that, Hunico got on the top turnbuckle and connected with his finisher, the Falling Star, to win the match. The fight still wasn't over though. Along with Primo, Hunico and Epico ambushed Jimmy Uso and forced him out of the ring. For good measure, Hunico also hit a defenseless Jay with a second Falling Star. I felt like this match was meant to do two things be an in-ring debut for Hunico, and also push this new trio. As Hunico's debut, I thought it was alright. I liked that he was the one who took down Jimmy when Primo couldn't, because it helped make Hunico look like a legit threat. As for the trio, while they didn't do anything new, it was an alright introduction. And even though they did need a distraction to win, they still seemed like a group to be reckoned with. So I like Hunico's debut match. It seemed to be setting up a new faction of wrestlers, so let's find out where that went. The answer is... nowhere. By next week, Primo and Epico abruptly left and joined up with Rosa Mendez. As for Hunico, he continued to feud with Sin Cara, and the rivalry saw them on opposing Survivor Series teams. Unfortunately, like his faction with Primo and Epico, Hunico's feud with Sin Cara also ended abruptly, when Sin Cara suffered an injury during their Survivor Series match. With nothing going on, Hunico started from square one and introduced his new partner, Camacho, a friend that Hunico had saved from several attackers. In early 2012, Hunico began feuding with Ted DiBiase because he didn't invite Hunico to one of his parties. What up with that ass? We're not good enough to party with your bossy? You gonna disrespect the shows? Deep stuff, I know. They went back and forth on wins and losses. Hunico would defeat DiBiase one week, DiBiase would defeat Hunico another. However, in their fifth and final encounter, Hunico picked up the W. Unfortunately, things sort of got worse for Hunico. He'd be seen very sporadically on Raw and SmackDown, and would mainly appear on Superstars and NXT. He did well, but whenever he wrestled on one of the bigger shows, he usually lost. In April of 2012, he and Camacho would have their first tag team match together. The team really didn't go anywhere, and to help put it into perspective, their biggest moment was getting beaten up by Kane and The Undertaker on Raw 1000. There was some positive though. In June, Sin Cara returned from his injury and wrestled Hunico both on Raw as well as the No Way Out pay-per-view. Hunico did lose both times, but it was nice to have some closure to their feud. Sadly, in mid-2012, Hunico had to undergo knee surgery, which put him out of action for the rest of the year. He returned in April of 2013, but wouldn't be seen on TV until November. 
Hunako continued to tag with Camacho, but they didn't do too well, losing every match they had on the main roster. On NXT, the story was a bit different. Starting in December 2013, Hunako and Camacho feuded with the tag team champions, The Ascension. Hunako and Camacho won their first match against the champions, which earned them a title shot. Their second encounter with the Ascension didn't yield the same results, and saw Hunako and Camacho on the losing end. This built up to a third and final match against both teams, and would also be the last time we saw Hunako in WWE. Hunako's last match aired on the January 8th, 2014 episode of NXT, and like his first match, it was a tag team contest. Unlike his first match, Hunako was teamed with Camacho, and they were competing under Tornado Tag Team rules. As mentioned, Hunako's final opponents were Connor and Victor. At the start of the match, Hunako targeted Victor and cornered him up against the turnbuckles. Using chops and his shoulder, Hunako began his assault on the smaller half of the Ascension. Victor wasn't going down easily though, and fought back with his own offense. The two wrestlers went back and forth for a while, Hunako would be in control for a bit, and then Victor made a comeback. Things finally picked up when Hunako transitioned to roll up into a school by powerbomb, allowing Camacho to come crashing in with a leg drop. The Ascension decided to retreat to the outside, but Hunako and Camacho went right after them. The two teams didn't brawl on the outside for very long, and were soon back in the ring again. Hunako continued to go after Victor, while Camacho returned to Connor. Both men began pounding at the Ascension on the ropes, but Hunako and Camacho's dominance ended with two simple power bombs. The devastating move rendered Hunako helpless as Victor began wailing on him. Their fight eventually spilled back to the outside again, where Victor used the unforgiving environment to do maximum damage to Hunako. The former Sinkara Negro was beaten down, but he refused to give up. Things unfortunately got worse for Hunako, as Connor decided it was his turn to beat up the Texas native. Hunako soon found himself struggling to stand in the corner, while the Ascension whipped his tag team partner right into him. Connor and Victor went for a second Irish whip, but Hunako and Camacho had their number this time. Hunako landed a big crossbody on both of his opponents, while Camacho took them out with a double clothesline. Riding their new momentum, Hunako hit a springboard moonsault for the pinfall, but it wasn't enough. With one last resort, Camacho planted Connor with a Samoan drop, allowing Hunako to hit the falling star. It would have gotten them the win too, if it hadn't been for Victor's interference. Camacho and Hunako easily overpowered Victor and sent him to the outside. To make sure he was done for good, Camacho went for a suicide dive, but Victor countered with an uppercut. The distraction allowed Connor to sneak behind Hunako and lay him out with a full Nelson slam. With Camacho out and Hunako stunned, this set up the perfect opportunity for the Ascension to hit the Fall of Man and snag the pinfall. This was a pretty average match. There wasn't anything super exciting about it, but I didn't get bored watching it either. One of the coolest parts was seeing Camacho go for a suicide dive, but nothing else really stood out. For a final match, it felt fitting enough. This was the third time Hunako and Camacho had faced the Ascension, so this felt like a natural conclusion to their feud. It was also nice that Hunako's final match was with Camacho, since most of Hunako's career was spent with him. While the Hunako character wouldn't be seen anymore in WWE, Hunako the person would. On the December 2nd, 2013 edition of Raw, Hunako would don the mask and began competing as Sin Cara after the original left WWE. If you're wondering why Hunako's final match happened in January 2014, but he started wrestling as Sin Cara in December 2013, the Tornado Tag Team match was filmed back in November 2013, but aired roughly two months later. Hunako had wrestled as Sin Cara for six years before being released from WWE in late 2019. It's kind of ironic that Hunako started his WWE career as an imposter, but ended as the real Sin Cara. Speaking of which, if you want to watch the imposter Sin Cara, or Sin Cara Negro's first and last matches, hit the video in the center. Comment below with your suggestions for the next video. And with that, I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.